Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the program. Today we are going to continue with some JavaScript optimization because there were some things I didn't have time for in the last video. So uh, today we'll be looking at the JavaScript heap and um, improving one of the core data structures, which is the um, heap block storage. So the JavaScript heap in libjs is um, built out of these things called heap blocks. Each heap block has a block size of 16 kilobytes. So we always allocate 16 kilobytes to create a new block. And then uh, each block is subdivided into cells with a given size. And then when we're trying to allocate a JavaScript object on the GC heap, um, we find a heap block with a suitable cell size and allocate one of the cells out of that block. Now, the way that we look for um, an available block to allocate out of, we can find here in heap allocate cell. And the main interesting logic is right here. And basically, as you can see, we just iterate over all the heap blocks on the heap. Uh, and then we just pick the first one where our desired allocation size would happen to fit. Now, this is suboptimal for two reasons. The first one is that we are iterating all the heap blocks. A lot of them are going to be full uh, or too small or otherwise like not suitable size-wise, right? Um, and we're just... Um, actually, I said both reasons <laughs> in that statement. Um, but yeah, so, so we're going to iterate all the blocks and uh, not only full ones, but also ones that are not suitable size-wise. So. Um, today we're going to improve this data structure by separating out um, blocks that have available cells and blocks that don't, and then um, moving blocks between those two lists when we do our garbage collection, because garbage collection is really the only time when we learn um, sort of the truth about what's actually used in a heap block. Um, between garbage collections, you don't quite know if something is live or not. You have to perform a garbage collection to know that. So um, updating this will be part of the GC work. Uh, and then I think we can also do better than uh, having to like walk all of the blocks, right? So we want to split this into something where we have like a per cell size uh, block allocators so that when you come here and you have a, a cell size that you want to allocate, uh, we just start looking in the right allocator right away instead of looking through all the blocks. Um, anyway, that's what we're going to work on. So we'll start by uh, start by changing the key map to English, which was Swedish for some reason. Uh, and then we will create something. We'll call it a allocator. Heap. Allocator, yes, okay. And what is a heap allocator? Well, it's essentially a um, something that has a cell size and a list of completely full blocks and not completely full blocks. Uh, and then it can help you allocating a cell by, I guess, like fetching something from the list of not completely full blocks. And actually, if, if uh, we exhaust a not completely full block, we would then move it to the full block list. But only a garbage collection could later move something from the full block list to the not completely full block list. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So let's see about that. Um, so we want a cell size because every, uh, oops, what am I doing? Uh, every allocator is going to be bound to a constant cell size. I think that will make sense. Uh, I, oops, uh, So what are we going to put in here? I guess we're going to have a vector, 
of non null on putter to heap block. So these are the uh, completely full blocks, or we can just call them full blocks. And um, the other one we can call like usable blocks, maybe. It's pretty decent. So then. Um, Those names seem okay, and then we can have a cell allocate cell. And allocate cell, um, we'll look in the usable blocks if we have any. If not, it will instantiate a new heap block and initialize that. So it can take care of all that. We should also know the cell size. So we'll put that here, and we'll use const so that it can't get reassigned after construction because we never want to change it anyway. Okay, that would be good. Mm -hmm. So, so far so good. And then allocator allocate cell. So here, um, let's see. If m usable blocks is empty, then we have to put a new block on there. So then what we'll do is we'll just m usable blocks uh, append make heap block. Um, oops. Um, Block. I forget how these are made. Heap block. Create with cell size. We have a helper. Okay, great. Heap block. Create with cell size. Um, my cell size. Mm. Wait, what? Oh, I have to provide the heap. Well, that's okay. So we could either store the heap with the allocator, or it can be an argument. I think we'll take it as an argument. No need to store a bunch of heap pointers everywhere. Because um, we'll be calling this from heap, and then we can just pass in star this anyway. So let's see. Heap. Cool. And then here, all we need to do is say, Block is m usable blocks. I guess we'll take from the. Um, let's go from the end of the vector since it's a vector, uh, because it's much easier to remove something from the end of a vector uh, than from the front, right? Because if you remove from the end, we only have to update the size, whereas if we remove something from the front of a vector, we have to um, shift all the contents. So we'll be. Um, starting from the end. So last, and then cell is block, um, allocate. Wait, what is that thing? Block, allocate. Yep. And then Um, if this makes that block uh, empty, wait, what can we ask about this thing? Mm, oh, I guess, wait, if allocate fails, I guess. So that's how we currently, currently if allocate fails, then we just skip over it. Right, right, right. So we don't have a way to ask if something is empty. But that's easy, though. We can just um, say is full, not empty, full. Um, so if the free list of the block is null, that means that there are no free blocks. So we are full. Also, I don't know why I made that one so wide. Um, so allocate should succeed. So we'll assert that it succeeded. 
But then if the block is full, we will um, move this block to the full blocks list. Append um, usable blocks take last. OK. That feels sane. Um, and then how do we use these in the heap? Let's see. So instead of having a vector of heap blocks, what we will have is a vector of allocators, I guess. Um, so let me just put these here in the forwarding header. Allocators. So we're still going to have to scan this thing to find the suitable allocator. Of course, we could make a table um, where you can look up an allocator. Uh, we'll do that later, but um, right now we'll just put them in a vector. Okay, and then uh, let's see. In heap CPP allocator. We have blocks. Um, we're iterating over blocks in various places. So this is allocate cell. But then um, we have these things that look for. Hmm. Cell from possible pointer. So this thing needs to be smarter. These things need to know how to iterate through all blocks, basically. Um, Empty blocks, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, so I guess we can start at the allocate cell. See how we implement that. So instead of iterating all blocks, we want to find a suitable allocator. So maybe we should actually instantiate the allocators, first of all. Uh, allocators append make allocator. Uh, and then we'll make some, some nice allocators with some sizes that we want to use. I'm not sure exactly. We'll, we'll just do something like this for now. Um, there are definitely smarter strategies for this. Um, but I think, I think this will work for now. Mm. Let me see, what is the smallest, um, like a primitive string? What is, how big is that? It's 12 bytes, and a cell is uh, 8 bytes, and a lexical environment. How big is that? I wonder. 76 bytes. Yeah, okay. So, I'm not going to have anything smaller than 12, because that's uh, how big a cell is. So, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. We'll do these sizes. Um, and then maybe we will have a helper to locate a suitable allocator. Um, so we'll do something like this. Allocator for size. Um, Allocators, if allocator um, cell size is cell size return allocator putter. Otherwise, assert not reached, and then we'll get here if we don't have such an allocator. Okay, and then this thing can be very, very private. Nobody needs to be calling this from the outside. like what I did here. This one needs to be a star and allocator needs a cell size getter. Sure. Okay. And then here what we'll do is allocator is um, allocator for size. 
and then we can simply do um, turn allocator allocate cell this. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. Um, and here, I guess we can just this is looking for exact sizes, so that's not great. What we want to do is we just want to say if it's bigger than or equal to the cell size, then it's good enough. Okay. So then we have all of this code. Let me see if we can get here. All of this code that uh, looks through M blocks, which we don't have anymore. So let's make a helper for ourselves, something like uh, type name callback for each block callback and this guy will simply do um, for each allocator callback uh, or let's see um, allocator for each um, block and call back something like that maybe then we'll have to put this out of um, line because we can't see allocator maybe we just allow ourselves to see allocator here it's not the end of the world okay and then in the allocator header, we'll just make something similar. So block in, so we'll iterate both the full box and the uh, usable blocks. Okay. So then, I guess we should have a way to exit iteration early if we want. So that would be something like um, if callback returns iteration, iteration decision break, then return. Yes, this will be better. There we go. And then we simply need to do the same up here. So. If this returns, oh wait, wait, wait. Um, hmm. Okay, I guess we can do that. check here um, blocks find let's see so what does this do so this takes a potential cell pointer so this is from the conservative um, garbage collector pointer scan stuff so we're we have something that we think might be a pointer to a cell and then we just look for any block that um, may contain that cell. So I guess it would be something like, um, well, the block is going to be like this. So if block equals possible heap block, um, uh, 
Possible heap block. Wait, what do we do with that? Oh, found false. Uh, found is true. Turn iteration decision break. Continue. Something like that. And then if not found, return null footer. Yeah, that's a little bit awkward, but uh, it'll work. All right, so what was the next? Here, sweeping all the dead cells. So sweeping is when we go through every block after we've marked everything, then we go through all the blocks, look for any unmarked cells. And if they're unmarked, what well, we used to think they were live, then we have to call the destructor on them. Um, so that's how things get actually destroyed. So here, instead of iterating the blocks like this, we can simply do for each block. Uh, boom. And I think these just simply become block dots instead. Block has live cells. So this is where we discover if a block becomes empty. Hmm. But we would learn that anyway when we... Um, or wait, would we learn that? I guess we wouldn't learn that. Um, If something is completely empty, I was thinking about the um, full state, but here we discover if there were if there were no cells in an entire heap block that got marked, uh, then we can technically free that block. So here um, we're just like gathering up a list of completely empty blocks and. Then um, we'll want to um, talk to the allocator for those blocks um, to get them removed. So here, uh, wait, let's see. First, we got to wrap this up. And then we got to talk to the allocator, allocator for size block. Cell size. Um, and then we can, I guess, reclaim or free block, maybe free block, block. So yeah, okay, so that will kind of work. Allocator. Um, free block, heat block. And let's say that really only the heap should be doing that. to actually iterate both our full blocks and empty um, or usable blocks list because we don't know where it is. We just know that we have it somewhere. Um, something, I think these return true if they remove something. No, they don't, okay. Um, Here. Um, yeah, let's do this true. If we remove something, we'll return true, otherwise return false. Because that allows us to verify that something was removed by just asserting here. So assert remove something. So 
something like that. So this will have build problems probably because I forgot about things, but um, wait, I didn't do that right. That's not the thing I wanted to badge. There we go. We still have M blocks here. Okay. So live blocks, we have to compute that. So for each block, Hmm, I guess that's just a matter of block count, live block count. Iteration decision, or that's not going to compile. And it's the same story here. Continue. And what else did we forget? Heap 284. Um, Sixty one. I guess we have to amp those. Hmm. Okay, so now we get the, um, the full punishing rebuild because we've touched uh, vector. <laughs> but it's it's pretty fast on this computer. Shoutouts to all the lovely people who sent me computer parts. Um, this would not have been fast on my previous computer. And on the, the one before that, uh, don't even want to think about it. Um, although the build is getting, you know, it is getting slower all the time. Um, part of that is kind of unavoidable, but it, it is a shame. That is a sad thing about C++, how the build times just um, accumulate. Anyway, we're getting there. And these really long ones, they really only happen when you, um, when you pull or when you mess with um, ACK headers. So we built. Oh, and I'm in Swedish keyboard again. I don't know how I did that. Uh, okay, so we are crashing. Cool, because we didn't remove something. That's a bit suspicious. So why didn't we remove something? I guess, let's see. So it runs a couple of tests and then first garbage collection goes to heck, probably because we didn't implement um, Transitioning from full to usable, for example. Yeah, we're, we're missing a bunch of things. So let's see. Um, maybe what we want to do here is free block. Let's just say block uh, did become empty. Because what we really want to do is we want to just tell the allocator that something happened with the block, and then it's up to the allocator um, to decide if it wants to, for example, uh, hold on to that block as a cache or something. Like We can leave that to the allocator. So we want to notify him that it became empty. So let's rename free block to um, block did become empty. Block did become usable, let's say. Allocator. So 
here we'll assert that the block is not full. And then um, let's see. Full blocks take. We need to find it. Um, find first index. Uh, this is a bit messy. We can do a find. It's a bit messy searching for something that's um, a non copyable value type like non null umper. Uh, so we want to find with a finder that looks for um, return entry is equal to block. Assert it is not full blocks end. Um, can we? Wait, what does this give us? Find. Can we get an index from that? Simple iterator. Index, yes, thank you. Okay, it's a little patchy, the API here, <laughs> but we can do it. Um, so we'll take it index. Um, block. Oh, um, say owned block or whatever. Usable blocks, append, move, owned block. Okay, so it just moves between the two lists. Maybe we, maybe these shouldn't be vectors, but like um, maybe blocks could be in a linked list um, with each other or something that we wouldn't have to bother with these vectors. It might be nice, I don't know. But we don't have to do that right now. So, um, let's see, block did become empty. And for the blocks that became usable, um, let's see, cool. block uh, became usable. Let's, oh, let's, um, block was full. Oh no, block is full. And then bool block. Hmm. And then at the end, if block was full is not the same as block is full anymore, then I guess we can tell the allocator right away. Cell size did become usable. Block. Does that work? Yeah, so we're just moving it between the lists. Seems fair. So why do you crash? Where are we crashing? Let's find out. Are we having an assertion failure actually in vector h, blah, blah, blah. We are in um, sweep. Okay, wait, let me, let me build this without optimizations so that I can see what's going on a bit better. It'll only take a moment. Hmm. So we're indexing into a vector of heat blocks, um, but we are somewhere we shouldn't be. And sweep that cells. If 
for each block. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is going to mess with the list. Oh, we can't do that. We need to move it to the usable blocks thing. And this one needs to be renamed, so full blocks that became usable. And block. Um, something like that, and also that. Um, okay, so now we are failing. We can block they become empty. Assertion remove something failed. Let's turn on the very noisy debug and take a look. Oh. Okay, so we have a heap block here that became empty. This guy right here. These are just things that we are deleting, I think. So a lot of destruction going on. Um, and why is he not on the list? Let's take a look. Uh, allocator. So you, this block was neither in the full blocks or the empty blocks list. That's a little bit suspicious. Wait, is this going to make a copy? That's not what we want. E block shouldn't be copyable. Yeah, and then we're trying to copy it. Right, right, right. So we shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so now we're looking for an allocator for this very large cell size. That doesn't seem right. Um, why do we believe this cell size? That is if we print it out. Uh, Python x of this big number is well that looks like a pointer. Um, seems like we have goofed somewhere. Usable again. Let's see. Is going on. Let's see about grind. Let's do a little valid grinding. Yeah, we're doing some, some dumb shit. I had a feeling. So we have an invalid read. Uh, after something we freed. Reading the cell size from something that we freed. Um, and it become empty. So when we got to become empty, we 
remove the block. So all of these became empty. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Um, if something has no live cells, then we also put it in the empty list. We shouldn't be putting it in both lists. That's not going to work out. Okay. What else don't you like? Alright, so we're just failing to find an allocator for presumably what is something quite large. So, um, no allocator for cell size. At least we fixed our crash. So, 2120. That's a pretty large um, cell. What kind of object is that even? Oh, it's probably a global object, actually. How big is that? 208, okay, so that's probably not it. What the hell is that large? Um, I guess we can crash here, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll use uh, the scientific technique for crashing. A big int literal. Holy moly, that's a big object. Big int. It includes itself. Come on, what's that about? Um, is this a big moment? Oh shit. How big is that object? Why is that so huge? Unsigned big integer is 2072 bytes. Well, that is a large thing, but it is called big int. Uh, <laughs> it's bigger than I expected, I have to admit. Um, so that's really goofy right there. I think it's fine to um, for that thing to be huge now. That's not something we need to solve. Um, but let's fix the dumb header problem. Yes, fix recurse self including header. Um, and we can also do the vector change. Make vector remove first matching, return whether something was removed. Now we just need to um, have an allocator that, that can accommodate these gigantic things. So we'll make one that's like, I don't know. Really large. Okay, so this works nicely. It even completes. Let's turn off the um, debugging and see what that looks like. Okay, great. Um, it's definitely slower than before, so that's not very good. I used to complete in like half a second on my host. So let's find out what it's spending all of its time doing. With call grind. Call grind is a very nice subtool of Valgrind. 
uh, it gives you a uh, call graph by instrumenting the entire um, entire execution of a program at an instruction level, and then you can find out like how many times every single little instruction ran. The uh, only downside is that running call grind takes a moment. Um, but we could probably stop it already and find out what was going on here. So what were you even doing, my friend? Mm. Allocate cell. Calls allocator for size a lot. Allocate cell. Well, this thing should be in line. Always in line, and oh wait wait wait! I know what <laughs> I know what this is slow. I turned off optimization. <laughs> okay okay okay. Wow, that that I'm glad I figured that out quickly. Because that was gonna be a dumb investigation. Like, why is it so slow? <laughs> but um, yeah, so that explains why some nonsense like this was not inlined. It's like, that was weird. And here my cat wants something, but she'll have to wait. Um, yeah, 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 now it's completing like 300 something milliseconds, which is way better than um, 1.3 seconds. So we'll test it in Serenity as well. All right, we're at very comfortable um, times here. 600 something milliseconds. I recall at the start of the last video, it was at like 1.3, something like that. Uh, and of course, I, I've done a little bit of work um, between then and, and now. Um, so uh, this isn't entirely from the uh, change we've been making today. But let's take a look at the profile and see here if we look at I wanted to look at allocate cell. Where is it even? Allocate cell. Allocator allocate cell. So allocator allocate cell is quite simple now, actually. Yeah, because it doesn't need to iterate anything. Um, it's so like if you don't have a usable block, we create one. Otherwise, we just allocate out of the last block in the list. I think that's really good. And then, let's see. You know what, let's just use call grind for this. Now we started we started doing that, and I want to look at some graph stuff. Uh, that could be a good feature for our profiling system, by the way. To have um, this is not something we can't do this with the kernel time profiler, but since we have the user space emulator, um, it could definitely perform this type of thing as well. Like um, 
you could teach it how to um, instrument and collect like call graph information. Could be a nice little project someday. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Sorted by include. Included. Da, 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 da. I guess I want to look at allocation. So allocate heap allocate cell. Yeah, that's that's uh, the interesting one here. So um, most of the time, you can see we have like half a million calls. Um, we just go to allocate cell. And uh, we have 54 calls that go to the garbage collector. So that's because we have like periodic garbage collection after 10,000 allocations, we will perform a garbage collection right now. That's how it works. Um, there's no smarter here stick than that yet. But allocate cell goes to the allocator, which then sometimes has to create a new block. Mm-hmm. So can we see here what this looks like? Allocate cell. Um, oh, we don't have the instruction level. Um, this is this seems pretty good. That uh, the big int was kind of surprising. So the one thing we didn't look at here is memory usage. So now we've definitely um, we've done one good thing and one bad thing. So previously we would just search for the um, first block that we would find that could fit the allocation size we had. Um, now we will um, find the best fit. But so that's that's a good thing. Like now we do best fit. But the regression that we are taking here is that we no longer have like perfect cell sizes. Um, although, how did that work before? Let's take a look. I feel like there was a power of two something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're rounding up. We're rounding up to a multiple of 16. Yeah, so that's something that was tighter before. So we can do better. Um, hmm. But I think maybe right now that's not the worst thing in the universe if it looks like this. Uh, and we can definitely improve this situation in the future. Yeah, so. I guess I guess I am pretty happy with this. Let's see how this how this looks in the browser. So if we run something like um, let's run where's that thing? Ah, uh, need a need a find function in the browser. I'm looking for the request animation frame and I can't see it because I am blind. Here it is. Okay, so. Here, if I collect garbage, just I just wanted to look at this thing. So while this is running, it has 15 live heat blocks. That's pretty fine. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I think I think I'm gonna be happy with this for today because I wanted mainly to get the uh, the new architecture of per cell size allocators in place, and it is now in place. Uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of things that can be done going forward to improve on this, with like. Um, we can do faster lookup of these. We can have better um, sizes because these are just like arbitrary ones that I picked now. And there are probably all kinds of interesting tricks we can do um, 
to make this whole thing faster in various ways. But we'll save a little bit for the future. So right now, we're just going to go ahead and um, build a commit out of all this. Um, bum, 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 bum. Mm -hmm. Not you. Okay. Oh, oh, almost forgot the new files. The JS. Um, add per um, split heap into uh, per cell size allocators. Um, instead of keeping all the heap blocks in one big list. Um, we now split split them split it into two levels. Uh, heap has a um, set of allocators. One um, each with a specific Cell size. Allocators. Allocator has um, two lists of blocks. Full and non-full block. Now. Um, to allocate a new cell. Um, allocating a new cell no longer has to scan the entire uh, set of blocks in the worst case, but can instead it just needs to find the right allocator and then pop a cell uh, from its free list. Um, let's see. If there is, if, if all the blocks in the um, allocator are full, a new block will be um, created. Um, blocks uh, are moved from the full to non. Well, actually, let's let's use the right terminology here. Full and usable. Let's say. After GC determines, uh, after sweeping has determined that um, they are not completely empty and not completely full. Ah, uh, yeah. So. There are certainly many ways we can improve on this. This patch um, is mostly about getting the new allocator architecture in place. Okay. Great. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, And I am it, it, it feels feels like a nice architecture. I think we can improve on this. I'm just kind of thinking about um, if we should just 
put heap blocks on a list with each other. Because then we don't need those pesky vectors. Um, so what would we do? We would just make them can use an inline linked list. Wait, what's that thing called? Inline linked list node, right. And then It's been so long since I used inline linked list, I have to look look at one of them. Inline linked list node, and then you just need oh you just need next and prev actually. You don't need getters for them. So I guess we can just do this then. It's a little bit weird, but we'll, we'll do that and then in the allocator here, um, instead of these being done this way, there will be inline linked list. Hmm. Inline linked list heap block. Wait. But somebody needs to delete these things. Because hmm. this thing is not going to manage deletion. So we still need to do that. Um, Tail returns the tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a little more involved than I was hoping to get right now. One thing that's nice is that if we have the block, we can just remove it. Um, but we need to know which one it's on. Okay, okay, this, this is getting a little bit um, ahead of what I wanted to work on today. So I'm just gonna leave this one for later. Uh, and cut myself off here instead. Um, because, because, because I'm happy with what we did. So I didn't need to start on the next thing. So anyway, <laughs> anyways, um, I'm gonna end the video here instead. So if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out and um, I hope that you saw something interesting, 
and I, um, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit glad that I started on something here and that I uh, ended up punting on it for now because, um, because I mentioned in a video a while ago that I wanted to do this sort of thing more often where I sort of try something out and then kind of not feeling it at the moment and then just uh, get back to it um, a bit later or something or reject it for now. So now we did that a little bit. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time.